What's up guys, the Allfather here bringing you our next war recap. Uh, recapping our war with Latin Fury is what I thought, but I think it's actually furry, Latin furry, because they certainly didn't bring any furry, and they were more like furry, cute, and cuddly when it came to their ability to war. Um, obviously defeated them pretty uh, soundly, 55 to 30. 40 out of 40 attacks from us. Great job, that is the expectation. Doesn't happen all the time, but most of the time it does, and appreciate that. That is just one of the many things that makes us successful. And we'll look at the stats real quick here. Again, 40 attacks used. Three stars, 16 to 3. Big difference there. We are a three-star war clan. Uh, Two-star attack is a wasted attack. Uh, we need three stars to be an elite war clan, and we bring those on a regular basis. Uh, so, and that's thanks to you guys. We're going to go ahead and get into the attacks here, starting with an attack against number two. They had two rush Town Hall 10s at the top, five Town Hall 9s, two of which were rushed as well, and I mean extremely rushed. Uh, so we're going to look at my attack here versus number two. Uh, Town Hall 10, low level defenses, but does have the uh, Inferno Towers. Just doing the basics, get the lure, uh, Balloon and Dragon come out of the Clan Castle, drag them over to the corner here and uh, what I like to do uh, is my heroes are high enough level that this has been working for me with the lava loon attacks is just drag these troops out to the corner drop the archer queen and then the barbarian king right next to her cloak her so that they lock onto the king and the barbarian king tanks and pulls the attention of everything there while the queen and the archers take out uh, the clan castle. So that's pretty easy. Then from the other side, we start our Penta La Luna attack, and uh, that's going to be five lava hounds from different directions to try to soak up air bombs, backed up by the balloons. And you'll see those multi-targeting inferno towers um, just going to work, and that's why bringing a lot of tanks, five of the, of the lava hounds was important, just to soak up the attention of those inferno towers. And just raging everything up as they work their way through the core and taking out those Inferno Towers and the relatively low-level air defenses. And you'll see uh, once they get through there, everything's pretty much taken care of. A couple of loons on the backside to get those backside Archer Towers and defenses. But at this point, uh, not much time has gone by and just about every defense is down. Uh, you'll see the balloons continue to take out the defenses and the Lava Hounds work around. Uh, this, in retrospect, was obviously overpowered. There's still, I believe, t three Lava Hounds left uh, out of five. And that actually wasn't ideal, and you've heard me say that before in these Lava Loon attacks. Is, uh, the ideal situation, whether it's Golems or whether it's Lava Hounds, those big tank units, uh, if you're using them effectively, they should pretty much be busting and going down and losing their health because that means they're soaking up all the hits. So maybe a quadro, a quattro lava lunian would have been more appropriate, uh, just to have more cleanup troops. But obviously, was not a problem. They take down the air defenses because they were just so low level, and I wasn't sure how those inferno towers were going to play in. So I just went ahead and brought five. But now we know uh, against the town hall tens, if they're multi-target inferno towers, they're really not going to do much damage to the lava hounds. So. Um, just put that note in the cap for next time, and if we see it again, uh, I will adjust, or whoever takes it on will adjust. So, obviously, pretty easy there. If you're going to rush and have Town Hall 7 troops and a Town Hall 10 base, uh, I'm going to go and take it out and show you why you shouldn't do that. So, General Sherman here against number three, and he's going to bring a, a three golem approach here. There's three defenses easily to anchor on from the outside there and creates his funnel there with the wizards on the outside. So it's bringing everything in. Is drawing the attention of the clan castle now with that hog working its way into the middle. Brings his wall breakers to bust in there, and as soon as he's got a good wide funnel created, he'll drop his pekkas so that they go right to the middle, engage the queen. And so good attack here. Everything's going well. You see he's brought some hogs there, and first of all, they hit a giant bomb, which isn't ideal. And second of all, now they don't have much health, and they take out an air sweeper, and that's pretty much it. So those hogs, that was a big waste of about 30 spaces. And um, 
on the back side, you're going to see the effect of that. And that's nothing against Sherman. I mean, uh, brought a great attack, did a lot of damage here. Um, but those hogs are probably not the best use of, of that troop space in retrospect. Um, and you'll see why here as we kind of get through the attack a little faster. Um, but this is just them working their way around. Uh, still has a lot of golems tanking. He's got two golems there and uh, got a relatively large amount of health. They're soaking up a lot of damage to still. And that's what I was talking about in that last attack with the lava bombs is whatever your tanks are, you want them to take all that damage. You want them to get close to low health. Um, if you have a lot of tanks left at the end of an attack, you brought too much. And uh, we're actually going to take a look at that in another attack here next. But um, what I would have liked to see with these bad defenses and those uh, cannons on the backside is I'd, I'd like to see, like I said, instead of those hogs, is bring some backside balloons to take out those because the cannons obviously can't target the balloons. And then you can bring some quick, I mean, you could bring wizards, bring goblins if you want, um, barbs, archers, whatever, to clean up this backside. And instead of timing out, like he ends up doing there, 91% with just a few buildings left, um, very easily could have probably gotten a three-star just by bringing those back-end balloons and cleanup troops. So, again, uh, we're just trying to help people tweak things and get uh, ideas for how they can take these attacks to the next level for more consistent three-star victories. Uh, that's just what I kind of noticed on that one. But, again, overall great attack there by Sherman. And I'm going to try to get through a lot of attacks today, so it might be a little bit longer video. Um, but with the growth of the clan, I just want to show some different things and kind of show what we're all about and give you some ideas as to what the expectations are. So Mountain Dew Maniac taking on a pretty decent level, Town Hall 9. Uh, he brings four golems in. And my opinion doesn't mean it's wrong or right um there is definitely a place for a four golem attack i don't think a low level town hall nine like this is that place i think it's too much tank and not enough dps or damage per second troops i think drop a golem bring some more uh wizards or hogs or something to do some more damage um because the golems just don't do a lot of damage quick enough. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get towards the end of the raid here. But he does a good job with the funneling look. He's got everything going right into the core. The golems, the nice thing about having all those golems is they're taking a lot of damage and kind of tanking and protecting the queen and the witches. But you'll see here is all I see left is kind of witches and a queen. And that's what I was talking about, about not having enough DPS and having too much tank, is that... The golems are doing what they're supposed to do, but he just doesn't have enough firepower to get through this base fast enough uh, because of that four golem approach. And so four golems, like I said, has its place. Typically its place is with higher level heroes that can really do the damage quick behind them. Uh, when you're talking level 10 and level 13, you know, combined heroes under under 30, uh, would not suggest anything above three golem approach. So again, that's just my opinion, but just trying to give you an idea of uh, maybe some ideas again. And so we'll just kind of fast forward through this, but you'll see uh, all he's got is a queen and skeletons, and he still got the golems up. So again, there was way too much tank in my opinion and not enough firepower. I think he probably could easily three star that with a three golem attack, but. Uh, you know, again, this is all hindsight is 2020. So, uh, but again, great attack, two starred, and uh, very easy potential for three. Next attack here, we're going to look at uh, number six. And this is Dead Wizard attack on a very premature Town Hall 9 and a very lousy setup. And if you look at this base, it screams hog me from the very beginning. And because everything is close together, there's no spaces, there's absolutely no worry about giant bombs here. And so let's see how he approaches this attack. Starts with dropping hogs here on the bottom side just to accomplish the lure. And you'll see, just keeps kind of dropping them in single-handedly there, trying to make sure everything's out of that clan castle. Because the one thing that's going to ruin a hog raid, especially an all-hog raid, is going to be forgetting a wizard in the clan castle not getting everything out and so he starts dragging the troops up to the top 
with the anchor on that archer, but continue to watch down here at the bottom. There's going to be another hog down there. Why is that? We just got to be 100% sure that everything is out of the clan castle because there's just not a lot of room for error once you've used all your troops because hogs are not going to target defensive troops. They're going to target defenses while they get hammered from behind by the troops. So drops the poison there just to take the wizards out quickly. Witches and wizards and queen take out the rest. And as soon as that's all taken out, it's just hog heaven from there. So go ahead and fast forward through that. You see the king trips the bomb quick. Skeletons trip the other bomb. So two of the four bombs are taken out of the picture immediately. And then you'll see the heal spells placed about when the hogs reach half strength. Uh, when the whole pack is down, you start seeing the red. That's the time to drop the heals. And so, again, spell timing is everything with hog raids. You want to watch it, especially when you're doing a spam raid. Just watch when those hogs get down to about half health, heal them up. Watch again when they get down to half health, heal them up again. And you'll see that this was just really not a challenge at all. Very poor setup. Um, nothing stopping hogs from running through that base. Next attack is against uh, number seven here is also Dead Wizard, and we're going to see a three-star attack against a Southern Teaser base. We just saw this last war, um, a base that I attacked, a higher level base, um, but was also a Southern Teaser setup. And if you remember, we talked about when we see these, the first thing that should go through our mind is a Hogo Wee Wee. And so that's what we're going to see brought here. Defenses are relatively low. Remember that the idea with the Teaser base is... Uh, there's a lot of openings at the bottom there. They want to bait you into going into that opening in the bottom, um, which can be a good idea, but you have to have the defenses to make that a viable option. Uh, these are very low-level town hall 7 and 8 level defenses, so it's not going to be uh, effective having a teaser-style base when you don't have the defense to back it up. And so um, we'll take a look at what we... The approach here, first thing is when that clan castle is lureable, take it. Um, I know there's a lot of debate about whether to lure or not, but if it's an easy lure, take it. And not only does he get the lure, he also takes out two defenses in the approach. And not everything came out of the clan castle, but whatever troops you can eliminate, whatever obstacles you can get out of there, uh, at the beginning of the raid, if it's there and it doesn't cost a lot... It's all about value with using your troops. You know, that there was a lot of value there because it got the lure at least partially done and took out two defenses on the backside already. So it's a lot of value to that. Terrible witch drop there, but uh, one of them stays alive and it's okay, but that first one got taken out right away, so that was kind of stupid. But that's okay. Um, and then from there, we just are going to watch the main kill squad approach. And it's going to be a three golem approach uh, to try to distract the largest number of defenses there. And it's uh, backed up by wizards and witches. And with these teaser bases, almost always your giant bombs are in the bottom 50% of the base, which is why we suggest this Hogo Wee Wee approach, because there's not going to be any giant bombs typically on the top side to um, hinder your hogs cleaning up the back side. So usually we have these, heal, uh, these rage spells on the bottom. Go ahead and take out the clan castle remainder on the fly. And then once they get about to the halfway point, that's when the hogs start doing their work on the cleanup. And so not all that many. I think it's roughly eight hogs on the backside. And you want to get those heels down early. Just let them go to work on the backside there. Giant Bomb did take out one of the hogs because he kind of got outside of that radius of the heel spell. Uh, but the other ones are just going and systematically taking out those top end defenses while everything in the core is being tanked still by uh, skeletons and golemites and golems and all that. So um, the hogs kind of come in from about a 90 degree angle and work in concert with the kill squad. And now everything's gone. And it's just that quick. And from there, there's just a ton of troops for cleanup and it's just no contest. So again, Southern Teaser Base strongly suggests considering that Hogo Wee Wee attack style. Next is a, a hit down attack. It's the dumbest, but he's the Town Hall 9 going against Town Hall 8, but it is the number one Town Hall 8. And so 
three hogs there, takes out the defense, and gets the lure. Again, remember, it's about that efficient use of troops for the lure and accomplishing as much as you can and getting value. Drops the poison there, so that takes out the clan castle, and the king is still sitting in that poison. So again, good value for that spell. Uh, drops his split golems there, gets him wide enough to attract the attention of all the defenses, allowing him to create a great funnel. And as soon as that funnel is created, just drops everything in the middle. So, uh, again, yes, this was a hit down, but I wanted you to see how effective this attack was because of the funneling. This is perfect go wipe funneling because he got everything taken care of, all driven to the core, takes the core out. He's healing everything up and raging in the middle. And then he's going to heal it on the back side, just waiting to see where the majority of his troops go. Drops the heal spells there. And because he's a Town Hall 9, he's still got a heal spell in the bag. So that's the benefit, obviously, of a Town Hall 9. No reason Town Hall 9 shouldn't be able to take out any Town Hall 8, having that fourth spell and bigger clan castle capacity and all that. So, But again, the point is that was a great, uh, just a great execution of a go wipe attack. So I wanted to show that. Next, we're going to take a look at... A straight hog attack on awesome, uh, from Awesome Sauce against uh, the number 10 base here. And again, perfect hog base, right? Because everything is really compact. Uh, there's really, there's only certain spaces. Okay, so Town Hall 8 has what? Three giant bombs and three Teslas, right? So you look at the openings on this base. Even from a pre-scout, if you didn't even know anything, if this wasn't a follow-up attack you know where these things are going to be most likely. There's three openings on the outside. They're two by four. Uh, most likely when you see that setup, you're going to see a Tesla and a Giant Bomb combination. So to defuse that, it's real simple. Is You send test hogs into those open spots because they're going to come in, they're going to cross those openings and go right towards the defenses. If a Tesla pops, which it does, it redirects. And if there's a bomb there, it trips it. There's three openings. Pretty easy. So not only we did we defuse two giant bombs, we got the clan castle lure, defused the third giant bomb, and dragged the clan castle where we want it for the attack. So how much more efficient could that be um, than taking out all the giant bombs, exposing all the Teslas, and getting your clan castle where you want them before you even start the hog part of the raid? And so, um, you know, these are... Just little things that make a big difference in a three-star clan versus some of these other guys that we see that um, just don't really know what they're doing. Um, just going to kind of take a unique approach to the hogs. Again, there's no giant bomb worry, so just kind of does sort of an Asian wall, but really more just of a corner approach. And the idea being uh, all the hogs working in a line across the base, similar to funneling dragons from a corner of a base. Um, so rather than them being in big packs and going and circling around the outsides, they're going to travel in more of a line and just clear space for the cleanup troops to come in right behind. And so there's a variety of different ways to um, send your hogs in. I mean, we know that you can do it surgically. You can spam them one finger, two finger drops, multi finger drops. Um, you can do Asian wall, which is basically aligning them across one side of the base. Um, so again, these are just all different tactics and different methods of accomplishing the same thing. Everything's base specific. It just depends on what the enemy's giving you with their base layout. Um, but again, from here, very easy cleanup. Tons of troops. No problem finishing it off for a three-star attack. And our first feature of a Peter 322 attack here. It's going to be a Hogo wipe. Um, and it's a, it's a very small version of it though, looking at that army composition. He's got one golem, he's got one P.E.K.K.A., some wizards, and I believe, uh, I'm not sure what's in the clan. I think it's clan castle hogs as well. So very heavy on the hogs and not so heavy on the go wipe portion. Uh, so you see, instead of using the witches, he's using barbarians and wizards to deal with... Oh, he's got wizards in the clan castle. That's And then he drops his golem to distract the dragon. And level 6 wizards one-shot that dragon. Piece of cake there. And now he's working his go-wipe portion of the hogo-wipe. 
creates his funnel with his wizards. Keep them driving up the middle. Pekka comes right up the middle. Barbarian King. So this is his kill squad. This is the majority of his force here that's going to go in and start taking out a good chunk of the defenses right off the bat. That rage spell is going to get them, um, you know, activated, dealing with a lot of the defenses, breaking through some of those walls. And then great work here with the hog deployment. He, he takes two different approaches from two different sides. and But mostly it's at a about a 90 degree angle roughly from his kill squad. The, the one is on the back side. And um, what that does is it allows them to work together with the kill squad because they're taking out defenses while the kill squad comes in behind them. And he's got them fine working in that last compartment in the top. Drops a heal spell just in time. Those hogs took a hit from the giant bomb, but it was a low level one, and he got the heal spell down just in time. Brings those hogs back up to full health. Now all the defenses are down. They're standing in the heal spell, taking out the barbarian king. And this raid is over. And you'll see there, he's still got his golems alive. He's still got wizards alive. So he didn't need all that extra tank of a heavy go wipe. Uh, he just needed enough to distract some of the defenses while the hogs went around and did the majority of the work. And, of course, that clan castle, the last thing to go down often on a hog attack. But just a very well-designed, well-thought-out, and well-executed attack by Peter322. And number 14 is going to be an attack by one down, five up. And it's going to be an all hog attack. And this one, I told him when I saw it live, I was freaking out the whole time. And once he executed it for three stars, I said, we have got to show that one. Because it was hideous at times and beautiful at times. And you'll see what I mean here. Uh, notice there's a spawn point in the middle. Uh, this is a follow-up attack, so we know that there's a giant bomb there. So knowing he's going to do a hog attack, he's going to take that free giant bomb. Now, what these other Barbarians and Barbarian King are doing in, in there, I have no idea. I think the idea was if he could take out the Barbarian King right away, that that would just be one more step ahead. But it didn't quite happen. So he's going to drag up here and try to deal with this Clan Castle Dragon. And he's that with a poison spell you know i hate that because if you can't kill a troop with a poison spell and then he dropped the hogs and the dragon starts running after him so i was kind of freaking out there but then he turns back and starts going at his clan castle dragon so from there he's just dealing with a mass hog attack his dragon takes care of that clan castle dragon he's already tripped one of the giant bombs so he's only got to deal with two more there's one and it trips because it's in a terrible spot after they've already jumped out. And the last thing to do is drop a heal spell where the majority of the danger is, which is where the Barbarian King is and the concentrated defense is there. And there's a giant bomb there, hits them, but they heal almost back up to full health at least halfway um, after the hit. So again, really a lot of this was because of bad giant bomb placement on the base setup but decent health spell placement as well uh, helped one down take this attack out so uh, his hogs are working on the bottom they take out the final defense and start cleanup and then you'll see this clan castle dragon and the reason i don't like clan castle dragons on a hog attack is because there are two air bombs in any town hall 8 base and if you only have one dragon he's gonna hit one of them at some point and it's gonna take him out so you lose his cleanup ability but the nice thing with this is he takes the barbarian king out and boom, there's that air bomb. But he got the Barbarian King dealt with before that. And then those air skeletons pop up like, hey, where'd the dragon go? And they're just chilling out, uh, watching their base get destroyed. So uh, sometimes watching these is just kind of fun and comical. Um, but I thought that was a very interesting raid, a good idea. We were having trouble with this base. And I would not have suggested a hog raid going into it because we had only knew where one giant bomb was. It was spread out. There's just no way to guess where the other ones were. And if you hit one just right, it was going to take everything out. But uh, he went with it and it worked. And sometimes that's the way it is. Uh, it doesn't, you know, the way I would do it or somebody else would do it 100% of the time isn't necessarily what works. So uh, good job with one down, five up for taking that chance and making it work. Last attack for this war uh, that we're going to watch from our side is from Seymour Kitties. 
And this is a new attack that has kind of been patented by Zarek. And it's, uh, I didn't realize it until I started watching the replays. It is a 9543L, Zarek. And uh, uh, Seymour actually does two of these in this war. We're only going to watch one of them. Um, but he brings the 9543L. It's, it can also be classified as a dragon snipe. Um, but basically, the 9543L uses a combination of hogs, balloons, and dragons to systematically take out the air defenses. And then that 3L is the three lightning spells. And so he did this beautifully twice. We're only going to look at this one. But when you're doing the lightning and the dragons, you always take out the air defense first. Don't wait and try to do it while you're doing other stuff. Just get it done, get it taken care of. He creates his funnel uh, from this side over here because he wants to come in straight at a 9 o'clock angle. I don't like the Barbarian King there. Um, I pretty much made my feelings clear on that. I think using the Barbarian King on the front side of a dragon attack is a waste. Uh, you just don't get much value for what it, you could get for bringing him in on the back side with cleanup. But you see he drops clan castle hogs in the bottom to take care of that air defense. So two of them are down. He's got his dragons and balloons going over here. The balloons are going to take out that air defense. So there you go. 9543L. Dragon snipe attack in action. All the air, all the air defenses are taken care of. Oops, didn't want to do that. We want to speed it up, not slow it down. And from there, they just go to town. Uh, with this style, you tend to see about three dragons left over, so it can be a little hairy if you have like builder's huts in the corner. So be careful trying to use a style like that if you have builder huts in the corner. Um, again, that's where your Barbarian King comes in, is trying to bail you out from 99% attacks. But hey, this worked. 9543L, Dragon Snipe Attack, worked uh, twice for Seymour Kitties, uh, at least against these lower level bases. Um, so good job there. Another kind of unique style that we're finding some success with. And I know you're all waiting and excited for the biggest fail attack. Um, and I would have loved to give it to somebody, but we did a really good job. So the winner of the biggest fail attack is going to go to Latin Furry. Because remember, there's definitely no Fury in this clan. But it's going to go to Latin Furry. And it's going to go to Excalibur 2 against Baseball Boss. Now Excalibur 2 was that number 2 Town Hall 10 that I penta la looned and absolutely wiped the floor with. And he's got Town Hall 7 troops. So he brought me in to destroy him at the top and he's going at number 16 out of 20 Baseball Boss 101 with a giant wizard P.E.K.K.A. attack here. And he is going to be the winner of the biggest fail award this war as we watch him valiantly and futilely attempt to take down this base with his cheese ball throwing wizards, uh, level four wizards. Sorry if you have level four wizards, but I just think it looks funny like they're throwing cheese balls. And uh, he tries everything he can to get this attack in, to do something with it. He's got, you see that even against that max dragon in the clan castle, those wizards don't even do anything to it. So that's kind of funny. Uh, we're used to seeing wizards take out dragons pretty pretty quickly. That dragon just turns around and is like, um, you're dead. And so pretty much everything's toast at this point. That clan castle dragon's still up. And he still doesn't even have 40%, but his, clan or his Barbarian King is at the Town Hall. And man, he is just going at it with his level 1 Barbarian King. Heal him, rage him. He is at least going to salvage this one start. No, no he's not. And for good measure, throw in those three wall breakers at the end. Um, maybe they'll blow up 10% of damage in the walls, who knows. So, biggest fail goes to Excalibur 2 of Latin Furry. And that concludes our war recap. Great job to everybody. Uh, again, we have a lot of uh, new clan members now. So hopefully if you're watching this, you see what Assimilated is about. We are about three-star attacks, about bringing the best strategies and the best deployment. And not everybody started out that way. Um, and not everybody's there yet. That's the great thing. But we have the tools and the resources and the, the knowledge and the experience with our clan members to get you to that level. Uh, if you're serious about war and you are able to do the things that we ask, you will be successful and you will be doing these three-star attacks if you're not already. So we look forward to clashing with all of you, and we look forward to our next war upcoming here on Sunday night. 
And until next time, the All Father signing out.